Hello, I am Kat Riles, an artist up here in the mountains of North Carolina, and I'm excited for today's video because we are going to be diving a little bit deeper into the sketchbook challenge that I have going on with Brie over at Documented Journey. If you haven't seen her YouTube channel, go check it out. Follow her on Instagram. She makes beautiful, lovely things. Um, she's an artist, she's a painter, but she also makes cork covers that are vegan, eco-friendly. I love them so much. I use them for almost everything I do. And she and I have created a sketchbook challenge for each other and for y'all to join in where we are filling up all the books that we have and we're not going to buy a new one until we filled everything up and even then once we filled them all up she and I are going to make each other sketchbooks um just so we're going to see if we can go this year without purchasing a sketchbook and the reason why this video is so important right now it's just the beginning of February and I kind of already want to buy a sketchbook I can't do it. This is why a challenge is so great. I'm going to fill up the books I have. I'm going to show you how I'm taking some books that I have been working on. And I think that there are just some pages that occasionally I just am like, oh, that didn't turn out how I want it. It's not filling full like I wanted it to. And I'm just going to show you some of the tips and tricks, tricks that I use to transform a sketchbook into something that is, is it, hmm, turn it into something that becomes a, a treasure to flip through. So it chronicles what you've learned and how you're learning. And then it's also like a trove of inspiration and guidance for years to come. So I'm going to show you some of my little tips and tricks on that right now. And I look forward to diving in and seeing what you're creating, hearing how you get through these challenges of filling up a sketchbook, um, getting through to the last page. Um, I don't know why that's so hard sometimes, but there's so much joy when you have finished sketchbooks. I'm just excited to share this with y'all and hopefully provide some inspiration and see what you have to say about your tips and tricks for getting through those last pages of a sketchbook. All right, here we go. All right, let's see. Here we are. There's my desk. This is my journal. Like I said, this is one by Brie. Here's this, here is a sample of a page. Love this page. I was trying out some things over here. I really, every time I flip to this, I hate seeing this. I need to finish that. And I'm just going to show you some of the things that I do to kind of make me want to flip through this and not have those cringe moments. Maybe you don't have those moments, but I do. I like to be able to kind of get something out of everything. So if I have something like this, I want to cover it up. I have already gone through some of my old magazines that I collect from the thrift store and I've cut out some stuff. Um, and I'm just going to find something that fits that I can kind of just throw in here that kind of matches. I feel like there's a similar color story there. And yeah, maybe I'll cover up a little bit of this and that. And I'm gonna just use my, my pencil here to show where I'm gonna cut this. And we're gonna cut it down here. And I do nothing too fancy, but I like this because then I'm adding in this picture of something that interests me. I cut out all these pictures because I think there's something in them that I could find myself wanting to go back and like drawing these blue crabs. So I think this is going to be nice right here. I'm going to glue it down automatically. I see the connection between these and then I can start to fill in back here. I always like to write in my journals and sketchbooks. Like I kind of use that word interchangeably sometimes. But I do mean, um, I do mean my sketchbook. These are watercolor pages. I'm primarily just using watercolor and ink in them. I am not much of a multi-medium person at all. Um, I do work, I'm a painter and I work in acrylics and oils, but I also, I do all of those separately and I work in ink and I do some illustration, but 
for the most part, I keep all of those things separate. I kind of like sort of the purest work. There's nothing wrong with multimedia. I just, it's just not my thing and that's okay. I'm gonna grab, uh, I know this one doesn't have permanent ink. I'm gonna grab this pen. Hopefully it's ready to go. It might not be. I'm gonna draw. Let's get a bigger pen. Let me show you my my pen wrap. So this is my eraser, but I made this out of some of the fabrics I have. And these are my fountain pens that I use for my illustrations. I go from extra fine, fine, medium, bold, and double bold. And I'll use those for all of my um, illustrations and they all have platinum carbon black ink in them. I've talked about it before on my channel about how that's my favorite ink for illustrations. It is like when you hear bulletproof ink, this is the one that is, you know, within moments I could paint right over this and it's not going to bleed. Um, I have some others that say that they are, but this is the one that really has proven itself to me time and time again. And this, I'm using the fine tip. This is a Pilot Kakuno. I haven't used it in a little while, but it is, it's writing. And this is on cotton paper. I always find that cotton paper is a little bit more, um, kind of, it can get in the nib a little more easily because it's so fibrous. And so you kind of sometimes have to stop and clean out, clean out the nib, but I kind of like that there. I'm going to go ahead and grab this here. It's so funny. It's like, I've had these pages sitting here uninspired for the longest time. And all it takes is just a minute to sit down. I'm going to pull this little guy up here. I'm going to do another video about some of these new paints that I've just been testing out and trying out that a friend sent me. Um, I still try to keep my collection down to a minimum, but every once in a while a new paint comes into your life and you just can't, can't say goodbye to it, you know? It's okay. There's no judgment. This is a manganese by Holbein. It's hue. It's not actual manganese pigment. And this is the Hanamule um, watercolor book that is pulp and maybe like a little bit of cotton in it. I was happy with the way this page turned out. This is a page, don't know what happened, but I painted over it with, I'm not sure what I painted over this with. I'm going to have to figure that out. Um, these are fine pages. I think those were good. This seems a little bit lacking. Looks like I was trying to do a little ocean scene here. But let's give myself some inspiration on this side that I can refer to the next time I'm thinking about oceans and waves that might push me a little bit farther and deeper. I think I like this one for the page. And but there's another one too. But maybe I can set both of them. So a couple different options. So I can show in here a couple different options for reference about color progressions with skies. So I think I'm gonna cut, let me get the big scissors because they just cut these long pieces so much better. Okay, I'm gonna go about here. Okay, I'm gonna go here and here. Um, so I'm going to cut it here for the bottom, then I'll cut it here for the top. So I'm missing some of those shifts, but you still get the gist. So if I put that one there, and then I'm going to make this one thin thinner than it is so it will fit on the page and I like that I got the sun what it looks like right here and I'm gonna pick the bottom 
nothing too, too specific. I just kind of want to get a little bit, most of the main colors. Pick it up. And kind of works. Didn't get the top straight. That might bother you, but does it bother me? No. So I kind of like that. So these all relate. This is a great way um, to then create sort of a resource of oceans. Okay, so that looks better, and I'm not gonna mess anything with paint there. This is fine, it's not my favorite, and that's fine. I haven't finished adding ink. I think if I kind of, if I took the time, this one isn't gonna be waterproof. This one's gonna be blue. Um, and just like let myself kind of draw and, and play on the page. I think I would like this a little bit more. I like line and watercolor together. It's one of my favorite things. And so, even if you're like, okay, I finished that page, move on, go to the next one. I think there's still a lot to learn about going back to a page way after time. It's been almost, I mean, this was maybe like six months ago. Um, come back, do some work on it. Love this page. I still, I kind of want to make some stickers out of my mushrooms. This one's fine. That was a lesson in my sketchbook class. Um, this one's fine. I think I, I swatched out the letter sparrow paints over here. I kind of wish I had written those down in ink or gotten rid of them. And I think I'll like this page better. Sometimes just making a nice border makes all the difference. So I think there are a few different schools of thought on sketchbook. You just turn the page and go on to the next one. But I really like turning it into a book that I want to go back to and flip through. And, you know, sometimes that means covering up stuff I just don't want to look at anymore. Um, this page, I feel like, doesn't quite have the, the weight that I wish it did. So we're going to go, I don't know if I have the double bold ink. So we'll go with the Twisby. Let's see if she works. It's been a month, probably, since I have used this. And I have let that platinum carbon ink it and it writes just fine. This did not turn out the way I wanted. I had this idea for a color scheme that I thought I was going to really like and it turned out kind of hideous but here's the beauty of glazing. So we've kind of got this sort of brownish purple mess going on. So let's try to brighten it up. Um, time for my sketchbook you know I have an online sketchbook course and I love it and I'm so so thrilled um, for the community there and for the people that have, have joined and you can sign up at any time and just go at your own speed it really is I thought it would be a little bit more communal but I think it really is kind of something that you do at your own pace and kind of your own journey and I'm sharing ideas there of um, and, and lessons, like kind of how to do these pages, but then stuff like this is how do we take kind of simple lessons and then push them a little bit farther and take them to that next level. So um, if you're interested in that, the link's down below. And um, yeah, I hope you have a, a wonderful time filling up your pages and I can't wait to, to learn more soon. Okay, bye.